these here at Nimsy Insights randomly. Why? Because it just makes it easier for everybody to schedule. And also because that way we don't have to market them and advertise them and get signups and webinars and you guys can just pop on in, which is super cool. If this is your first time joining a Nimsy live event, then please feel free to jump in the comments, add questions, uh, Questions, comments, disagreements. Uh, we're usually pretty active over on the LinkedIn, but we are coming to you live on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, no Instagram today. If you're not able to catch this, then the recordings all will be made available to everybody, everybody in the world, not just people that signed up for this. And with that out of the way, I can introduce us to today's guest, Mr. Juanma Lopez, who is the host, mastermind behind, I want to say, personality behind a the, the new show from Multilingual TV, Multilingual Television, uh, called TEP. Or wait, no, I'm sorry. TEP. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hello, Tucker. Thank you for having me. Yes, and sir. hello everyone who is watching this show in all those platforms you just mentioned. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. I want to talk about your show today, but give us a little bit about your background. Who who are you? Um, tell us about Exero. Ex Exero? I, I've never Exero. Exero. I don't think I've ever pronounced that. I've seen it <laughs> written and I've written it a million times. But yeah, tell tell us a little bit about yourself. It's a Latin word, actually. It comes from Latin, the language, and it means bring to light. Bring to light. So uh, uh, when That's I founded my... what we do in the language. Exactly. Industry. When I found I founded my company, I wanted a, a short name for, for it and nothing that has to do with trans, etc. So I found that, that word in a dictionary, and I say that that's perfect. That's... That's great. And I feel really, really uh, strange in this position of being interviewed instead of me interviewing someone else. I know. But... Right? Like, you know, what's funny is I've been doing this is episode. Oh, my goodness. I have the wrong. I, I have you labeled as Rickert up here. Let me just fix that. I'll fix that when you're talking. But um, I, I've do, been doing so many of these. I think you're episode 26 or something now. But like no one invites me to come be interviewed. <laughs> on their podcast and I'm kind of afraid of the day when that happens because I don't think I'm prepared for it. No, you won't be prepared. I can tell you. <laughs> I'm feeling that <laughs> at this moment. But I'll tell you something about myself, my background. Uh, next year will be 25 years in the industry. Uh, um, I started off as a terminologist, which is something that no everybody can say. It's It's quite strange as a as, as job because i i only did terminology i wasn't translating or project management or anything just terminology just a for true two linguist years. a true linguist then. exactly right. exactly i did that for two years and those years we we saw the the um you know the, the internet and the uh mobile mobile technologies uh uh, coming up in our lives, uh, and there was there was a lot of terminology that were, was only in English, and we needed to find an adaptation and an equivalent in in Spanish, and that was a tough uh, work because we actually <laughs> didn't didn't uh, what well, we were not able to find solutions for words like software roaming. Uh, hardware uh this is like so many, back in the day when when these terms were like just being defined and exactly now, nowadays there's like part of every standard glossary but yeah someone had to do that work yeah yeah we, we did we did a great effort in trying to you know uh recommend some terms but they are in the glossaries now and in the dictionaries but well, unfortunately uh they are not used uh people still uh, prefers to to use the English word, although in Spain, particularly, uh, English is not, um, let's say, current. Um, it's okay. I won't get offended. Go ahead, say it. No, no. I'm, I, what I was going to say <laughs> is, people is not able to speak English fluently. I mean, it's it's, it's sure. not that yeah. we are. Uh, it's uh, not. There's not a high English proficiency. Exactly. Exactly. So, but uh, 
that was a very, very interesting job that I did for two years. And then I started working in a translation company as a project manager, which was more profitable. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, I, I spent eight years in that translation company. I did barely everything. <laughs> Um, when I started off, we were three people in the company. When I left the company, we were, we were 18. So wow. I, I was, I want to think I was part of the growth of the company. Oh, I think so. And, uh, and I decided to, you know, to start something myself. Uh, so I founded Excero in 2007 and, uh, it took me a while to, <laughs> to grow as fast as I uh, help the other company uh, grow. Uh, but uh, um, uh, that's I That's always the case though, right? When, yeah. when, when you're starting a company, someone told me this when I was starting NMZ and you know, I didn't believe her at the time. Or I kind of believed her. It was like, you know, whatever time, whatever plan you think on how long it's going to take your, your startup, your company to take off, double it. <laughs> Exactly. Right. And it's like, you know, startup founders aren't necessarily always in a place where they want to hear that or they're able to hear that, let's just say. But it, it's true. It's true. So it, it is a grind. And we, we actually here at NIMSI, we do a lot of work with um, like, I don't want to say smaller because I'll, I'll say um, companies that have not grown for a few years or something like that. And sometimes you just need that extra help to get over that hump there exactly yeah, yeah so exactly. that's that's xero x zero x zero x zero gosh um that's x zero and what tell us so we started working together tangentially although this is the first time i think we've actually met is this the first time we've met no not really <laughs> we met twice before when did we meet <laughs> Uh, we met uh, in a call. Uh, we, we, uh, I, I wanted to introduce myself to you, so I called you, and then oh, fuck in yes, a, yes, and then in language, a, language talker in a work eh, language in a, in a workshop <laughs> in a great, great, great workshop. Uh, uh, you offered us uh, for project management soft skills. I remember great. now. I remember now. You know how so, many times I've given time. that workshop. I've I, that workshop started off as this course I teach at, at Middlebury, and I'll be darned. It's become one of the most popular workshops that I've given. It's this account management for project managers, and it's funny because it's a very like what I would traditionally think of as like a fluffy workshop, right? Like it's not KPIs and hardcore like that. It's very much about like communication skills and stuff. Exactly. But I'd forgotten I, I'd given that with you guys. Um, that is something that I wasn't taught when, 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 I was a, when I started off as a project manager to have soft skills. I had a hard time with that. I had to say that uh, my manager was a pretty rough person and not really <laughs> had the soft skills absolutely necessary to be able to be a good project manager. And I learned that in my own company, thanks to, to my coworkers, actually, who, uh, who deal with that better than I do. Yeah. So all the insights I got from you in that workshop were really... Uh, well, I mean, necessary well, for me and, 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 well, thank you. Thank you for, for plugging my workshop. If, if you're out there and you're listening, contact me if you want more information, but I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about your stuff and we have, uh, not necessarily a clip lined up, but we'll play for a little bit. The intro here on, um, T-E-P. Un saludo a los telespectadores de TEP, el programa de YouTube que se emite en el canal de Multilingual TV, que como sabéis además es el único programa en español sobre traducción y localización que hacemos en Multilingual TV. Cinco programas, quinto programa ya de TEP y estoy encantado con eh, el apoyo que está recibiendo el programa. A todos os pido que si queréis decirnos cualquier cosa o comentarnos algo podéis hacerlo aquí abajo en los comentarios de YouTube eh, y estaremos encantados de, de leerlo. Yo estoy profundamente emocionado con cómo está funcionando el programa, con los invitados que traemos, conociendo a esa gente que hay detrás de las empresas 
que utilizan servicios de localización para vender sus productos en el extranjero y no solamente a los profesionales, sino conociendo también a las personas, su lado más personal, sus aficiones, dónde viven, qué es lo que hacen. Creo que es lo bonito del programa. ¿Queréis saber quién nos acompaña hoy? Pues lo vemos ahora mismo. We'll, we'll leave it there with that. Um, now, I think it, you basically, my Spanish is a little rusty, but I think you basically just explained like what this program is about. Now I'm going to ask you to do it completely over again in English for our listeners. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Uh, Start with why. I always like to, you know, why? Like, what need is this um, fulfilling? Who is this for, this program? This program is actually for everyone involved in the localization process, everyone in the localization industry. It's true that it's focused on interviewing uh, people that is working on the client side. Uh, that is something that interests me a lot because I've always been in the vendor side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is that uh, many of my guests are working on the client side, but have been working for years on the vendor side. So they are able to compare uh, both um, both uh, roles and they are able also to highlight uh, 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 all the differences and, um, and, and, and give this uh, idea on why we should all collaborate better vendors and clients. And, but uh, it also has a sort of, um, Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't want it to be like very, I mean, it is very professional, by, by, but I'm not interested in the localization manager of that company. I am interested in the person behind. Right. So what we do is uh, we, and, and, we talk and, about... Can I just say like, I love that. I love that because um, I'm very interested in talking to people and like understanding what people think. Um, what the humans think. And I'm less interested in talking to um, brands. You know what exactly. I'm saying? And I, I feel like we put too much emphasis on um, on brands here. Like if we're just browsing a conference schedule, trying to decide who we're going to go see. And it's like we don't even look at, maybe I'm just you know, reading my own diary here, right? But the temptation is to look at those brands because it's like, rather than like who's speaking, we look at like where they're from. Like, oh, I want to go see this person from Google speak. I want to see this person from uh, like fill in the, the blank cool brand name that you've heard of. And, you know, I think that's, that's interesting, but it doesn't do the person justice. I'm not saying that's not interesting, but I, I fear that what we get then is we, we don't get the, we just get very surface level, right? We don't get into like, what are the motivations? What are the fears exactly. and challenges of the people behind it? Yeah, and uh, and I I also try to you know uh, um, go with them in you know analyze their their journey because this is <clears throat> also a show that uh, can inspire people. I, I I like to think that when they see uh, what others have achieved, other people that have studied translation or localization or even something different, but Uh, but are starting uh, in the localization industry can see that other people just um, are working in a high level role night right now uh, in the localization industry. And that is very important to inspire people who are starting in, in our industry. So it's, uh, that's the why actually it's for everyone in the industry. And uh, So far, we, we've, we've uh, recorded five shows. Well, six. The six is on the making. And, um, and I see five published here. One, two, three, yeah, four, exactly. plus the, the, the fifth one, the newest one we just saw. It's yeah. The place, yeah. yeah, and the sixth uh, is, is, is being, uh, has, has already been recorded. And um, all those guests were from the, the client side, as I said. But I'm planning to invite other stakeholders in the translation industry, such as um, or association, uh, association members of associate, different associations, um, some popular freelance translator, content makers, etc., etc. I, I really want 
I really, really want uh, that people get inspired by what these people has to say have to say about about their journey in the translation and localization uh, industry. So, and and then so the the, the there are like eight, nine, ten questions about their professional life. And then I ask them questions. Do, do you ask the same them. questions each time? No. For, forgive me, I haven't seen too many episodes because no, like, I can imagine. <laughs> I can understand Spanish, but I have to be really motivated. You know, I yeah. she has to be really pretty if she's talking to me in Spanish. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> I don't listen to Spanish podcasts. No, no, they're not the same questions uh, at all. Um, but. Uh, I do uh, ask them questions about their different roles uh, normally to all of them. So maybe if two people had been in similar roles, I try to uh, uh, give, uh, have them giving me uh, different perspectives about all that so that, uh, as I said, uh, we, we all get inspired and get new ideas and get us thinking, right, about, oh, Wow, this is very interesting. Uh, I love when when one of my guests say something like super brilliant, and and that can make people yeah. say, "Hey, he's right or she's right." And uh, as I say, I've been in the industry for twenty five years, and I'm still amazed uh, about uh, several things that my guests said, and I had never thought about that about that. So. Yeah. So far, so good. And and that's what's cool. And that's why that's why for for this program, this is why I like to do it live, um, because it's just out there, mistakes and all. And sometimes I think some of the best conversations to be having about our industry are the ones where we're trying to figure it out together, right? Because I think a lot of us who who have been around for a, a little bit have ideas or thoughts or plans or what, what, whatever you want to call them that aren't fully formed and we don't want to talk about them in public because they're not fully formed and they sound kind of silly right and when you get minds together to actually have these conversations in, in an environment where you, where you can have those conversations then great things, great little tidbits come up, great little inspirational things like seeds that are planted. They may not turn in, you know, they're not necessarily action items, but, you know, little seeds that are planted that turn into cool things. And that's why, you know, this industry, it's just, it's so inclusive, all right? Like I have so much on my calendar. I sign up for events, especially everything that's gone gone virtual now. I'm signing up for events um, that I just can't attend <laughs> because I'm double, triple booked with, with all of these other things. So every morning I get to wake up and decide wh which events I'm going to attend, who I'm going to talk to. And it's exactly big community in this industry. Exactly. Yeah. And I love that. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, you know, uh, getting to uh, meet a lot of super interesting people now. And um, and I want the, the the rest of the world to know them too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm talking about interviews, and it's true that the format is interviews, but uh, I think it's more of a conversation. And as you said, uh, it's it's not a live event, it's not a live conversation. But uh, in my in the six programs I already recorded, I had I hadn't uh, a moment when I had to cut or um, you know. Uh, edit in a way, so it was. It, it's a yeah. true conversation, and sometimes I, I say. I'm oh. still waiting for my like Elon Musk moment, where I don't know if you you read about that. It was like last year, Elon Musk was like smoking weed on a podcast on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he got in a bunch of trouble. And yeah, that's the thing with live is like there's always that opportunity to say something you're not supposed to. I'm still waiting for that moment. Maybe it was today when I. <laughs> I for, completely forgot doing workshops and speaking with you before. Um, but that, that's another thing. It speaks to this industry, like how tight of a community this industry is. And now more so than ever after 2020, going through the whole virtual exercise, <coughs> excuse me, I feel so connected to people in this industry that I legitimately have a hard time. Like it's gotten to the point where it's like people, I forget what company they work for. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like if someone asked me next week, oh, Juanma, what company does he work for? Exero, uh, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I actually think that's a really cool thing. Like I'm it happy is. about that because what it means is that I'm, um, you know, focusing more on the people rather than the companies. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with this. It's just such a con- it's just such a connected industry. Like I feel like I've met people that I've never even met before, right? So I'm I'm always like, hmm. like why? And when I come across like this morning, I was on a, a a client call with someone who was like, yeah, I've never heard of Nimsy before, and I'd never met them before. I was like, wow, this is awesome. We're gonna have a cool conversation. We're gonna learn some stuff because I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I, I also feel really connected to all the people I'm, I'm, in, uh, I'm talking to in, in, my, in the show. And uh, who, who have you fantastic. had on? Who have you had on so far? I, I know I've got it pulled up here, but yeah, I mean, the first first episode, uh, um, uh, I had my uh, my great friend Sergio Llorens. I work with him for several years and it was the first episode that I, I, need, I needed someone I really trust uh, in uh, and someone I really yeah, know I and, and, and I feel comfortable with. And, um, and he did a great job, an amazing job. And so little by little, I started interviewing other people, Carmen, uh, uh, David, uh, um, Julio, they are all super interesting. And um, Daniel also, I didn't forget you, don't worry. <laughs> this is Carmen. I had a lot of fun with her. <laughs> She's super funny. And she has a great story to share. And she talked uh, a lot about uh, processes in Agilent. And, uh, and, and, and she actually uh, shared a lot of information. And I really appreciate that. Because, as I said, for me, uh, talking to people who are working in super big uh, companies that are um, uh, are in Madrid, but are uh, the companies are U.S. based, it's, it's always it's, it's something I, I I don't know. I've never do I, I've never done that. So right. it, it was it was it was great to to know. So I, and and I had had a lot of fun with that. And and I always um, uh, that, ah that is Danielle, uh, she works in, in yeah. In, I'm just going through these. You can stop me if you want me to stop. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's great. It's great. And and, and Danielle's first language is. I mean, uh, her parents are from Argentina, and she speaks wonderful Spanish. But oh, for those of you that I mean, pardon me, one moment. For those of you that are listening as a podcast, we're just viewing some silent footage of some of the episodes that he's had so far in describing those. Exactly. And, uh, and so her first language is not sp- Spanish, but she speaks Spanish wonderfully. So Brave. I, I appreciate that I can in- interview something from the U.S. in Spanish. Uh, which, you you can edit, a, you can you can interview me in Spanish, but it would be really? very I'd very difficult. How much time I'd, do you have to I'd edit that? that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not me who edits. So. Oh, that's true. It's multilingual to edit. No, I wouldn't <laughs> exactly. do that. I wouldn't do that to our poor editors. It would be horrible. But you see, we laugh. Uh, I like to to I have those that. conversations. Yeah. I like to to make uh, you know to uh, have some serious questions but other uh, more relaxed i always ask them the last question is always the same for all the the guests it's if you had never started in the localization industry uh what would you do for a living Ooh. and yeah so let me ask you this question if you would ne- if you had never started in the localization industry tucker what would you do for a living right now? <laughs> well, that's a that's a hard one, right? I know, I know. Well, I I mean, I went to school for accounting. I went to school to be a bean counter, right? And I was going to be a CPA, certified public accountant. And um, I don't know what happened to me. Well, I do know what happened to me. Um, I ended up working for a language company. I spoke different languages. I I'd learned Spanish and German over over the years and I got my first job much like you. I was, I was never, 
you know, I did technically get my start as a linguist, as a translator, but I don't claim that because I was so bad. I was so horrible. There is no reason I should have been translating anything. But I, my first job was a project manager, very much, very much like your origin story here. You know, small company. I think there was like four or five people when we started, and um, I am very grateful for that experience in that small company. I, I hated much of it at the time. Because it was like there was no support. There was no DTP department. You know what I'm saying? It's like, guess what? You're learning Frame Maker <laughs> because you have to do this. Um, but it really did teach me a lot about, you know, how to be a project manager and taking accountability, taking responsibility for anything. But I'm just avoiding the question. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I don't know. But I know <laughs> that it would be something in the service industry. Because I have and I've always had a passion for um, being of service, like helping people. You know, one of my first jobs was working in a restaurant, like literally serving people food and learning customer service. And a lot of what, what I talk about in that account management course is, fr frankly, I learned that waiting tables. I didn't learn that in school. I didn't learn that in localization. So probably something service related. Um, you all know, have to think about that so that when you invite me. Cuando yo recibo una invitación para su programa, yo you're not going to invite me. So I guess I don't need to answer that question. <laughs> well, you never know. <laughs> you never know. But good, good answer, by the way. What are some good of the answer. answers you've received? What are some of the most memorable ones you've received? Uh, I love ar archaeologists. I have two of that, archaeologists and geologists. So uh, very different from the translation industry. But I'm still waiting for someone that had an answer that wowed me. For example, I would I would answer artist. I, I would be an I would have been an artist. I don't know in which form. What I know is that my parents killed any of my artistic skills when I was a oh. little boy. They didn't want me to do anything related with arts. They wanted me to study and become a teacher so that I have a, um, you know, a payroll every, every month. Uh, but I, I, I definitely would be an artist. Well, Something in the media entertainment industry. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, now it's going to be hard for me to concentrate the rest of the show because I'm going to be thinking about that, you know. I'm going to be thinking about that. But I can get archaeologist um, because a, a lot like – or like anthropologist even. Like that's something that fascinates me too because I think there's a lot of overlap there with the people that are naturally drawn to languages are the mm -hmm. same people that are naturally drawn to culture, you know, studying different cultures and diversity and a lot of different um, – intersecting topics i would say yeah not a lot of accountants I, <laughs> no, no i don't think i i doubt you've ever talked to someone's like i i dreamt of being an accountant when i grew up yeah that's the kind of kid i was i actually thought oh this is gonna be a good job right <laughs> but, yeah definitely so that's that is one one question i i always uh ask them at the end of the show and normally if they are not living in spain i'm also asking them house life uh, in, the, in the place that they live uh, in, like Berlin, Dublin, etc. So uh, that's, it's that's, hot. That's fun. It's hot right now. Yeah. I'll answer that question for everybody. Everybody I've talked to around the world, except for the Southern Hemisphere, they're all sucking hot cocoa and putting on their sweaters. But everybody I've talked to in the Northern Hemisphere is like, it's hot right now. Wow. Here in Seattle. Not here. Not here, unfortunately. We, I'm, I'm still waiting for the for the summit to arrive here really? in Madrid. Madrid yeah. is not hot. Okay. <laughs> That's Today a first... is a little bit hotter, but yesterday and the day before, uh, yeah, we had like 15 degrees. Like, Jeez. We are all right. we are all, we are almost in July. Like, come on. Well, after this, after we're gonna wrap here, I am going to be packing my bags and heading down to California to get some of that sweet, <laughs> sweet California sunshine. And I am very excited about that. But, but yeah. before we go, I, we're hitting about the, the 30 minute mark here. I, I'd like to, when's your next show come out? Is there a date? Uh, next week. Next I recorded week? it uh, last week and it will be next week, but we'll be having shows the whole summer. And we have several 
little surprises for our audience. Ooh. We're yeah, we're thinking about uh, standing this uh, phenomenon, and 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 uh, this was the first the first uh, show in multilingue that wasn't even in English. So, uh, and, and like I said, and maybe that's before before we close up here. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. What is the importance of it, the significance of it um, being in Spanish? How have you seen people react to that? Is that something that people were asking for? Is it something that maybe they weren't asking for, but they are glad it exists? Well, first and foremost, uh, it was something new. Right. So uh, I like people name. are, yeah, people are, were really interested in, in seeing how, how it, it was going to be. And I think they are not disappointed at all. And they're, they're asking for more content, in, not only in Spanish, but in other languages. So um, uh, there are more and more content every day. We know the translation industry and the localization industry is, you know, uh, everything is in English. And uh, I work, I'm here in Spain and I work 90% of my time in English. Uh, but still, I think we need, uh, we need to, to be able to have these sort of shows in, in our own languages yeah. too, to, so that we can network uh, uh, better with, with, uh, with people that, uh, that share our language and we can exchange information in our own language. I think that's great as, as a, as a, I, I am actually, my background is not translator. I, I studied uh, Spanish language uh, and literature. Uh, I don't know how to translate that in, into English, but uh, I I'm a passion. I, I remember talking about this now, actually, with you. I yeah. Think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was pass I've, I've always been pa pa uh, uh, passionate about languages, and uh, and I think we we need to take care of our languages uh, and. And, and have content in, in, in every language. I think it's super important. And the platform is called Multilingual, so please yeah, be I know. multilingual. <laughs> I know, I, and I agree, like, but I agree, but like, I, I feel kind of like a poser, like agreeing because I'm just a native English speaker. And so, you know, it's kind of like that whole, I hate this thing, but you know, I'm check my privilege before talking about this kind of stuff because I've, I've been, born into a world that caters to English speakers. Um, fortunately for me, I, I would say, but you're right. You're absolutely right. The magazine is called multilingual, <laughs> right? Exactly. And it's um, interesting that this is the first uh, multi actual multilingual content that, that we're publishing. And I, I really hope that we see more. I mean, if I, well, yeah, it's, I, we will see more. Let's just put it that way. And yeah. I think when we do, we'll have you largely to thank for it because you were the trailblazer here. And speaking of everything in our English being in English and people only talking in English here, Camicia is here to prove us wrong. Soy yo o se debería de dar versión tu de esta entrevista en español. Yeah, we oh. need this interview to be in Spanish. Yeah, judging by okay, how sure. I pr just pronounced when I read, okay. ju judging by my pronunciation, reading your comment, Camisia, I'm not sure that's going to happen. <laughs> but I have no problem looking like an idiot. So if someone wants to be very patient with me, I will gladly give an interview in Spanglish. Thank you, Camisia. <laughs> All right, sir. Well, let's. I, I am already. My mind is already in California. But this has been a thank lovely you. way to. Thank you for sneaking this in before the vacation. This has been a lovely way to to ease on out. Thank you. I'm going northwards. I'm going also several days on vacation, but to the north of Spain, to the cold and the rain. Yeah, call me crazy. I am, but uh, well, it is, it is what it is. <laughs> give me a week in hundred degree Fahrenheit weather in California, and I might not be calling you crazy. That <laughs> might actually sound very appealing. Wanma, thank you so much for thank coming you, on. Doctor. Thank you for coming on, and thank you more so for the work that you're doing over here on multilingual television with Te Epe. For those of you that are not subscribed, go subscribe to Multilingual TV. Go search for Multilingual Media on YouTube. That's a place where we archive all of our stuff. But it also comes out, I believe, on Facebook, LinkedIn, all, all of that stuff. Once again, this has been Nimsy Live with me, Tucker Johnson. We go live periodically, randomly. We're working on putting some structure to it. 
so far hasn't really happened but we've got some interesting guests coming up so if you're not already please subscribe to these channels that's the only way that you're going to get notified of new content when it comes out so with that i will once again say thank you very much sir for coming on board we'll thank have you. you on again and see you on multilingual tv see you thank you for having me tucker thank you everyone bye bye bye